Uh, the FCC report um, offers a number of suggestions for how to fill these gaps. Uh, while we did declare that government is not the main player in this drama, we did nonetheless suggest a number of significant policy um, suggestions for government as well as other players in the, uh, in the system, and I want to just talk about a couple of them. Um, for instance, government at all levels should dramatically increase the information that it puts online health data, uh, criminal justice data, political campaign contributions, government spending. Um, you talked before about the, these, are the these are the public's airwaves. We have a right to expect something of it. This is the public's data, too, and we have a right to see it for free. Or how about this? Here was another idea that we, uh, we talked about. Um, the federal government currently spends between $500 million and a billion dollars a year on advertising. M almost all of this goes to national uh, broadcast and cable operators. How about if we ask them, federal government, to consider putting uh, this advertising money through local media, local newspapers, TV stations, nonprofits, websites. Uh, this could be more cost effective in re reaching their messaging. It could create some jobs locally. Uh, and it will help struggling uh, innovative local media to get traction with their business models and serve their communities. Uh, the government, we argued, on behalf of taxpayers, can and should ask something more of the broadcasters that use the public airways. It is totally appropriate, for instance, to ask them to disclose uh, not only how much coverage they do, about their community, but what kinds of coverage, and other things, news sharing arrangements, things like that. And I don't mean coverage that is locally relevant, uh, because that is a loophole that you can drive a truck through. I mean coverage about the community uh, in, the, in the common sense way that that term can be understood. Um, I also think that uh, stations should be required to disclose online pay-for-play situations. Pay-for-play, this is one of the most disturbing things we found about uh, in the local TV market. Not all TV stations, I don't think this is by any way a majority, but there are a disturbing number of stations that essentially are allowing advertisers to dictate the content of uh, some of the content on their news shows. Sure, we'll take a sponsorship from this hospital. Uh, all we have to do is agree to only interview people from that hospital or to agree to take the health stories from their list. Uh, this is appalling and is going to really undercut trust in local TV news if it spreads. Now, they are all actually already required to disclose this through sponsorship identification rules, but it's a fleeting mention at the end of the broadcast. So I thought a simple change, uh, say, if you re are required to disclose this at the end of your broadcast, you should now be required to put it online permanently, forever in an easily searchable format so that citizens can compile this, come up with a list of the stations in America that have the most pay-for-play violations. Uh, the National Religious Broadcasters had an interesting suggestion to us, which we uh, embraced, which was that uh, for religious broadcasters, when they're producing shows um, that are about local problems or international problems, um, shouldn't they be allowed to help raise money for the charity that's working on that? They said, why don't you at least start as an experiment by having 1% of our airtime be allowed to do fundraising. You allow us to do this occasionally for disasters. And I thought, well, it is pretty hard for the FCC to justify saying, uh, we will do this for disasters that involve wind or rain, but we will not do this for disasters of slowly creeping famine or local hunger. So I like this idea of allowing for that kind of flexibility. Most important, government has to make sure that this country has universal access to high-speed internet. It's a matter of economics and equity. Economics because these business models that I talked about before are going to have an easier time getting traction if there are more people visiting them. Um, if you get the rest of the country online working in high-speed internet, that would lead to a 50 percent increase in potential customers. Equity, of course, because if traditional media is contracting and there, and yet there are simultaneously all these wonderful things going on online, but you're not online, you've actually taken a step backwards in terms of your, the information you as a citizen uh, can have. Um, 
you know, we would never have thought of building the interstate highway system, but saying the poor were not allowed to use uh, this highway system, or we weren't going to put exits there. Uh, we made sure that the Postal Service uh, would reach everyone at some expense. And as the Internet transforms media, bringing benefits, tremendous benefits, to those who you can use it, we need to make sure that everyone can reap those benefits. Um, but ultimately, these problems will only be solved if the public, citizens, foundations, philanthropists, civic leaders, come to believe that having a healthy media system actually matters. And I became a little worried as I did this that that basic thing, which I know everyone in this room believes, is not a, is not a commonly held view. It is not clear or commonly believed by many Americans that this matters. If we don't have good journalism, especially strong, uh, tough accountability journalism, democracy cannot function. If politicians, businesses, civic leaders, religious leaders, all powerful institutions, uh, are not watched carefully, they will grow corrupt. Um, I think that is something that religious t uh, leaders have taught us and got right uh, pretty much, that um, there is enough uh, inherent in enough people that uh, of, of, uh, of um, uh, unfortunate corrupt nature that that will be the tendency if they are not watched. Uh, and by the way, as you know, when this kind of corruption happens, it does not tend to be the most powerful people in a community that suffer. They usually figure out ways to uh, survive uh, uh, dis dysfunctional political systems. It is local public health that will suffer. It is schools that will suffer, uh, become less effective at teaching and less able to provide opportunity to, to all Americans. Lives will be lost the least powerful will remain voiceless. The fabric of communities will fray. And I fear too often the moral conscience of communities will not be sufficiently aroused, not because citizens stopped caring, but because they stopped knowing. Now, on the other hand, I want to remind you that our report also concluded that the new technologies have, in many ways, improved accountability, improved access to information, and empowered citizens to both contribute and share their news. That really is true. We have had tremendous advanta advances at the same time we have these deficits, which leads me to today's good news. Um, if we can work together to preserve the tremendous benefits of the new technology and make sure that they are available to all, while at the same time addressing the serious challenges, we will, in fact, have the best media system we have ever had. So that is the challenge, I think, for all of us, is to work toward that goal, which I think is achievable, but only if we come together and realize that what is happening currently in modern media matters a lot. Thank you very much.